Yo, KP Sky here. Welcome back to the channel, new and returning viewers. Choosing the right speaker can feel absolutely impossible at times, but I want to go ahead and share how I picked mine. So why did I choose these speakers anyway? Well, I don't even know where to start, but when I was in my teens, I'm 25 now, I saw these speakers and fell in love with the looks of them. And of course, I know that's not a reason to buy a pair of speakers, but hey, they looked incredible, so they had to sound incredible, right? <laughs> I mean, look at them. I wasn't sure, honestly, so I did my research and found out that they were just as amazing as the build quality suggested. I started off in home theater on the wrong foot, honestly. I had mixed match speakers everywhere. My left speaker was a tower speaker, my right speaker I think was a bookshelf, and then my center and surround speakers were like little satellites from a home theater in a box. I wasn't doing good. <laughs> With no job and still being in school, the Poke Audio LSIMs were nothing more than hopes and dreams, but over time I started to make my own money and started buying just anything that sounded decent and wasn't too expensive without listening and researching, which of course I know is a big no-no. Because of that, I've been through at least 8 or 9 receivers and a home theater in a boxes. And I've owned crazy amounts of speakers too, because I was always looking for something better. I couldn't afford the speakers I truly wanted, being 2000 per speaker at the time, just for the fronts. So I kept selling and buying speakers until I found something that, air quote, I could deal with. I ran into the Fluent Signature Series speakers and heard they were a serious bang for your buck. So I went ahead and bought them, and they were huge but very appealing, and I thought, with as good as these sound, I'll keep them forever, right? Well, as we know, that didn't happen. <laughs> I still wanted those damn Pocadio speakers, and after cycling through receivers, speakers, and power amplifiers, I realized one thing. I realized that the only way I could be happy with my system for longer than a couple years, I'd have to invest into what I want to get out of it. SVS is a name we all know and love, and after owning two of their PB1000 subwoofers, I knew that this company was a company I wanted in my home. Now, I'm a bass head, but not in the way you may think. I like clean, even, balanced bass, but I love, love, love low bass, 25 hertz and under. The PB1000s were good. They're very good, maybe even great. But I realized that my ears weren't into entry-level sound. I love music too much for it not to be replicated the best it could be. That's when I bought a pair of PB4000s. Didn't need to audition these because after hearing what the entry line of subwoofers they can do from SVS, I knew it was the sub for me. It's like riding in a Honda Civic and upgrading to an Infinity. <laughs> Sorry Civic owners. Now we're here today and as you watch this video, you see every component in my system. That makes everything come to life. My Monolith 7 I now have 7 times 200 watts per channel. My receiver a Yamaha Avantage RX A3070. And of course the never forgotten Oppo 203. My Blu-ray player. It took years to put this together but with patience and persistence I built this theater with one goal in mind. Being happy in this space. Eventually I purchased my LSIM speakers. I started with the surrounds, then bought the center, and floor setting speakers came shortly after that, and maybe a month later after I saved a couple more hundred dollars, I received my pair of bookshelves. They looked incredible with the mahogany piano black mix that they have, and the undeniable build quality, coming in at over 100 pounds per speaker. These speakers were, and are, still amazing guys, and sometimes you see something you want, and you instantly think, oh no, I can never have these speakers, it's just way too high in price. In parts that may be true, but you spend more money buying decent equipment every few years than you would if you had saved up for things you wanted in the first place. I learned that the hard way, unfortunately, but I learned. And now I get to share my opinions on home audio and help people avoid doing the same silly things I did. I now have a 5.2.4 system with some upscale equipment powering everything, and honestly, I couldn't be more happy.
So why did I choose these speakers that I have today? And honestly guys, you have to go through a lot of mistakes. You have to blow a few receivers, buy a bad speaker, to really figure out what you really want. And you can listen to every forum, YouTube video, reviews, every bit of advice. But at the end of the day, what works best for you is up to you. The best speaker to 50% of the people here may not be the best speaker for you. And you have to understand that there is a little bit of a budget that comes with home theater. It's a very costly hobby, unfortunately, and it's an ever-evolving, ever-changing hobby as well. Today, these might be the best speakers, and tomorrow, it might be something else. So you have to pick something that's best for you, and that's how I came to these speakers. Now, the PB4000s, my subwoofers, they're, they're badass. They really are. But they're not the best subwoofer out there on the world. There, there are bigger subwoofers, there are subwoofers that are more powerful, there are subwoofers that get lower, that play more accurate, but that's okay, because the PB4000s do exactly what I want, and nothing less. The Polk Audio LSIM series speakers are pretty old, I'd say they've been around for over 10 years now, I think, and they still sound amazing. I'm still impressed today, I've had these for a few years now, and I'm still in love with these speakers as if I just unboxed them last week. And that's the satisfaction that you get whenever you pick a speaker that caters to your needs. I chose these speakers because they do exactly what I want and nothing less, sometimes even more. And the way that I came to wanting these speakers is yeah, I did watch reviews on YouTube, I did read a heck of a lot of forums, I read every review out there on these speakers to come to a conclusion if I liked them or not based off of what other people said. But again, I had my own idea of what I wanted. And when I'm reading reviews and watching videos, I want to see if these speakers possibly do what I want them to do. Now, what I may want them to do may not be what people think they should do. But if they do what I want them to do, then they're a good speaker for me, if that makes any sense. So, I have them paired with a Monolith 7. I have a Yamaha RX 3070. And it works. It works just fine. Now, do I want to upgrade in the future? Absolutely. And will I? Absolutely. Formats change. Audio components change. What's inside of them changes fairly quickly, and usually they get better. Usually. Um, some will argue against me and say the old stuff is better, but hey, I'm only 25. I can't argue with you. I'm not sure if it is better or not. All I know is what I know today, and uh, what I have now has done absolutely everything that I could imagine, which is why I haven't upgraded that much. I've added to my system, but I haven't taken anything away and replaced it with something new because everything that I have has been absolutely amazing. So guys, if you're out there looking for home theater components, if you're unhappy with the stuff you have now, put some money aside, save up, get what you really want. I can't stress that enough. It sucks to uh, put money into something and then you don't like it. If you have speakers out there that you're looking at, read the reviews, of course. I'm not denying any review reading. Definitely read your reviews, watch your YouTube videos, help get help making an, uh, an uh, assumption of your speaker. Is this going to be good for me? Of course, if you can listen to that speaker in a showroom, if Best Buy may have what you're looking at, go listen to it. Now, you're, you're going to have to understand that they're going to have it preset to a certain way, a calibration to a certain way. It's going to change how it sounds at the moment you put it into your home. It's never going to sound the way you heard it at a showroom, but at least you get a good idea of what it can and cannot do. So, get your ears on a speaker. If you can't get your ears on it, definitely watch reviews, watch um, any kind of YouTube videos you can. I know it's not the best audio quality, but they're going to give you the best advice that they can. Watch multiple reviews and see if what they say is consistent with another review, with another YouTube, with another forum. You're going to find similarities in everybody's speeches that maybe can give you an idea of what these speakers can and cannot do. And that's how you come up with what speakers you want to get. Don't just buy just because they're cheap, or don't just buy because your friend has them, or a lot of people like them on YouTube. Buy them because they work for you guys. So that's how I came to this system here. Will I change it? Absolutely. I'm going to change this system. It may not be soon. Good guy. So we just ended the subscriber showcase um, just this past Monday. And a lot of you guys have some fantastic home theaters. You saw the videos. If you haven't, go back and check all part five, four, three, two, one. Check out those videos. Fantastic home theaters, components that I don't have personally that you now have exposure to. It gives you more of an idea of what you can and can't get, price points. You guys can communicate with each other, talk about things. It's a great, it's a great little series that happened, and I'm really glad that I did it. So 
um, check out their home theaters. We just ended that showcase, and there's a lot of good things going on in your all's home theater that you guys can learn from, not just mine. But I will be upgrading eventually. I will be changing my receiver. I may be adding another um, external amplifier, and I am still working on my second home theater in the bedroom. So i got a lot of changes coming. I still want a TV in here. I do want a bigger television. I know you guys have been yelling at me for that, so I, I do want a bigger television. But I know I'm going on too long, so we'll end it here, guys. I do appreciate the 3,000 subscribers. We actually soared past that pretty quickly. We're at like 3,020 or so at, at the time of this video. So we're rolling, and I want to keep that ball rolling as fast as possible. So if you're not subscribed right now, now's the time to uh, let's let's kick let's kick that subscribe button today this week is going to be a kick that subscribe button challenge kick that subscribe button but don't break the computer don't break anything just kind of hit it with your heel leave me a comment down below how have you been enjoying the videos am i doing well do i need any new videos leave me some feedback about what you want to see and then of course hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and we will definitely see you guys in the next video take care guys